Oh, you are messing me up here pretty good today. <laughs> Outside Ohio, dial 1-800-543-0471. From Ohio, 1-800-582-1701. And from the greater Cincinnati area, dial 749-3420. with us, uh, local boy made good, trying to be better. And the, I repeat, the uh, third annual Super Bowl PBA Regional Open at the Super Bowl in Erlanger, Kentucky, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Steve Fair will be there, and he is the uh, two-time defending champion, trying to become the three-time defending champion. 749-3420, the number to call will be with Steve until 8, and then after 8, we'll uh, hook up with uh, WTAE in Pittsburgh with Stan Saverin. Talk about them uh, Steelers from Pittsburgh uh, playing the Los Angeles Raiders. Uh, Mr. Fair is a big Cincinnati fan, too. He's rooting for uh, Los Angeles to beat up on Pittsburgh. We definitely hope they're pumped up for the game. You got it. All right, let's go to the phones here for some instruction or some uh, best wishes. You're first tonight with Steve Fair. Go ahead. Yellow. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Hello, Steve. How you doing? I just stopped him over here and told him this. Okay, Bob. I've been uh, following you ever since you was born on King of Bowling. <laughs> Trying to miss it this year. Only, you only made, how many times do you make the top 25 this year? Well, as far as the, the televised finals, I made three this past year. Yeah, I've seen two of them. I guess I missed the last one. How's your wrist doing? Well, it's feeling real good right now, so I just knock on wood and hope it holds up for the winter tour where the big money is. Okay. That sounds good. How long ago did you start on the uh, King of Bowling? Oh, my oh, gosh. It's been that's a while. Back almost 10 years. Yeah. How old were you? Well, I guess around 18 or 19, 18 just out of the 19. junior leagues. Is that right? That's a long time. It sure is. Well, thanks for calling. Yeah, I want to know, is, uh, is it going to cost anything to come out and watch that tournament you're bowling in this weekend? I believe it's one or two dollars to get in, and there's still quite a few openings for the Pro-Am, too, for bowlers that are looking to bowl with the pros. Yeah, I was thinking on getting on that, in on that. Is there still some openings for that, you say? There sure is. Okay, Steve. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for your call. Weekend. Thanks for your call. Yes, sir. Yeah, l l let me give you the prices here. Friday, the practice session, um, 3.30, there's no charge. The Pro-Am Squad, 6 to 8, that's $5 for adults, two fifty for children. Uh, Saturday, the A Squad qualifying, 9 a.m., that's $2.00. Uh, B Squad qualifying, that's $2.00, that's at 2 p.m. Then the Pro-Am Squad, 7 to 9 p.m., uh, 7 and 9 p.m. on Saturday night, that's $5.00. And then the match play, 10 a.m., Sunday morning, televised finals, $4.00 included with match play, $2.00 for children. So those are the prices for you at the uh, Super Bowl in Erlanger, Kentucky. Uh, back to the phones, okay. You're next with Steve Fair. Good evening. Good evening, Mom. How are you? Fine. Steve, uh, this is Tim. Uh, the whole family knows you, and uh, nothing makes us happier than we pick up the paper in the middle of the week and uh, see your name in there big and bold that you're ready to cast. Well, thanks. It's ex excited for the uh, weekend when we know there's a possibility you're going to be on TV. Well, I sure appreciate hearing that from you. That helps a lot. You know, uh, it, uh, every time we see your name and uh, the other fellow from uh, Kentucky and then, of course, John Gant. Right, Kevin Gillette. Right, right. It, uh, it, uh, Bowling's big time in this area, and it, it uh, really helps. It is getting better. We've got a couple young prospects ready to come out on tour, and I think uh, that's going to help Cincinnati get a little more notoriety and help the bowling industry here in Cincinnati. But why this area? Why does this area produce so many, uh, what it, it appears to produce, good quality professional bowlers? Well, I think basically because there's a lot of tournament-oriented bowlers around here, and uh, the king of TV bowling, like was mentioned earlier, uh, the TV style and the, the type of head-to-head -head format really gets the youngsters, you know, it gives them something to look forward to and something to, to somebody to beat. You know, if they see me or they see the John Gann or something, maybe they want to try and work hard to become a bowler like that and uh, think about sense. beating us soon. Yeah, local hero. Right. Oh, I want to be like uh, Steve Fair. Well, uh, Steve, Steve Fair's an All-American. It'd be pretty hard to fill his shoes. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. There's a lot a lot of guys that are better than me, but I'm working hard at it. Now, you sound like a relative. Well, well I, I was just so impressed because of the men like a Carl Compton that's so impressed with Steve Fair. You know, you can't do nothing but respect and admire the man. Well, Carl's got great knowledge of the game of bowling, and he's helped me along the way and at different times, too, so uh, he's a pretty good man. Right, well, I did want to have uh, one question concerning the shot they give you. Now, they talk on TV all the time that the shot changes from uh, bowling establishment to establishment, but does it ch uh, change from uh, day to day when you're in one house for a week? 
what's unbelievable is it changes a lot of times from game to game, not just day to day. The, they have a crew set up to maintenance the lanes and, and do them each morning. They only do them once in a day. And they use additives in the oil, which sometimes uh, will carry the oil down longer and make them get slicker. And other times the heat and everything will make them dry up. So they actually change from game to game. It's very hard. You've got to be on your toes and make quick adjustments. Yeah. Do I notice something different about the bowling on TV that I haven't noticed in the past? And, and look, I, I'm not the world's greatest bowler. I'll admit that I did a lot of bowling up in training camp. But it appears to me that when you watch the TV uh, finals on, on Saturday or Sunday, that there are a lot more uh, uh, bowling balls sitting there that the, the players can choose. And it seems to me back eight, ten years ago, a guy went to the lane with a ball. Usually a black beauty, too. Usually, right. Yeah, right. One ball, and he used it. But now you... Am I dreaming? Do I see people changing, changing during the game? The companies have got on the bandwagon, and the urethanes are becoming so popular today that there is a lot more equipment available to the bowlers. And if you don't have them all out there with you on the racks, you may miss the boat. If you leave one back in the paddock, that could be the one that would get you the winner. Is that right? So it is that important, and I am not seeing things. It does, no, in fact, happen. It's very important, and you need to have them all out there. Yeah. How can you judge from, um, from, uh, from, from just... Uh, uh, put this and not game to game but just uh uh, frame to frame, which ball to use? Well, basically ball reaction is the most important thing. The guys that do make it as far as to the top five on the televised portion, at that point they've got a ball that pretty much got them there that week. The first thing they're going to do is try that ball, see if it reacts about the same as it did in the week. They get them there, and if it does, they're going to stick with it. If it doesn't, then they've either got to go to something new that they drilled up the night before just in case, which we do an awful lot of times, or something else that, that reacts similar to give them the reaction to the pocket. Hmm. Now, when you're in the finals of a uh, big tournament. Have you had a chance prior to the TV performance or the finals to bowl on those two lines? You sure do. You get a chance. Uh, you get to bowl actually about 45 minutes prior to them starting the tape of the, uh, of the finals. But still there again, the, the lanes do change. Yeah. And the men try to do them about the same as they do all week, but, but with the changing and with the heat from the lights and everything, uh, that gives somebody a little edge and takes away from somebody else. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, that's one of the things about uh, bowling professionally that you don't have to put up with in any other sport. I mean, right. from frame to frame it can change, just yeah. like from game to game it can change. And, and you know, there are some times when you see a guy bowling in the finals and, and he looks terrible, and you wonder why. But how when you consider, sure, how, did, how in the world did this guy get there? But when you consider that maybe the lane is not what he thought it was going to be, and as you say, he's got the wrong ball, and all of a sudden... Right, the toughest part about that is the condition is totally invisible to us. That oil, you cannot see where it's at out there or where the oil has been moved just from the, the throwing of the balls. And like I say, a guy can look real bad on Saturday afternoon yeah. after bowling so great all week. And yeah. strictly because the lanes are just a little bit different enough on Saturday that he doesn't find it fast enough. Yeah. Can you tell if you're in the finals by watching the guys performing before you, if the lanes are uh, grabbing or slipping? Or it doesn't have to be you with your bowling ball and your delivery judging what might be proper? Well, you can definitely get a very good idea, but there again, each individual is different, and what you've got to do is take the, the practice shots you get and make the most of them. Hmm. Caller, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Okay, one other thing, Steve, is uh, it seems like it's been your history, so go down there and uh, win at the Super Bowl to get yourself on the way and get started on the right way for the new tour. Well, thanks very much. That'd be terrific. I keep telling everybody I'm running out of time because uh, Albie's coming up this year, and he skipped last year and a few other players, but we're going to give it our best here late. Um, I bowl at 9 o'clock on Thursday nights. I bowl at um, 9 o'clock in the morning on Sundays, and I bowl at 9.30 at Stones on Monday nights. Okay, well, the one nice thing is you bowl two late leagues there. The, the important thing is uh, pick a couple of the good bowlers that may be bowling in front of you on those late leagues. Try to get an idea or watch how their balls are reacting. But the important thing is, whichever ball you may have of those three balls, try and just, um, with the softest ball, the one that's going to hook a little bit more, throw it your first couple of shots there. If it grabs too much, then go to the, the next ball, uh, more of a medium surface, a ball that wouldn't hook as much like a yellow dot or something. And if it's grabbing too much, then I would go to the harder shell ball. What you really have to do more, more than anything is just watch how the ball begins to grab. If it, if it grabs too soon, then you've got to go to something just a little bit harder to get it down the lane. Is that the way you go from the one that grabs the most?
to the one that grabs the least? In other words, you, you try to Most, shorten the hook or, or lessen the hook? Most of the time the players are going to go with something that's going to give them a good grab, give them the most hook, and go down from there because that's going to give them the best pin action and the most power. Oh. Do you understand what he's saying? Yeah. Throw the ball without the hook. Yeah. Stand cross alley and throw no hook and good luck to you. All right.